Hi everybody, hope you're doing well. Ryan Jackson here. We're going to talk about section 440.14 today, which is disconnecting means for air conditioning equipment. This will be based on the 2020 NEC, although to be honest, it hasn't changed in quite a few codes uh, editions. So whichever version you want to use, the rules haven't changed for quite some time. My name is Ryan Jackson. I uh, own Ryan Jackson Electrical Training. There's my email address if you have any code questions and you think I can help you out. Don't hesitate to uh, send me an email and I'll help you any way that I can. This is the photograph that kind of brought up this discussion. Somebody had asked me my opinion on this installation and they said, does this disconnecting means for this air conditioner comply? And it's an interesting installation, no doubt. And I think we can all agree that it wouldn't be much fun to, uh, to be the electrician working on this unit, but does it comply with the NEC? That's the subject. So the rules that regulate the disconnecting means for air conditioners, for air conditioning equipment are a little bit different than the rules for a disconnecting means for motors in 430.102 or uh, transformers in 450.14. Uh, it, it's worded ever so slightly different and it's worth talking about. When you look at 440.14, it says the disconnecting means has to be visible from and within 50 feet of the equipment. Actually what it says is it has to be within sight of the equipment and when you go to article 100 within sight that means visible and within 50 feet. It also has to be readily accessible from the equipment so the disconnecting means must be within sight and readily accessible from the air conditioning equipment. It can be in or on the equipment, but not over the nameplate or any access panels. So here you can see that the disconnect is part of the unit, it's on the unit, and that's perfectly fine. It can be on the unit or in it, as long as it's not over the nameplate or any access panels. But it does have to be within sight and readily accessible from the equipment. So when we look at the definition of readily accessible, we go to Article 100 and it's accessible, comma, readily. It says that that's something that's capable of being reached quickly without requiring a person to use tools other than a key, or to climb over or under or remove an obstacle, or use portable ladders and so forth. So in this photograph, we've got a pretty obvious violation. Uh, overcurrent devices have to be readily accessible. That's in 240.24. And as you can see, I need to remove some obstacles to get to the circuit breakers in this installation. So that's a violation of this section. If I need to use a key, or pardon me, if I need to use a tool other than a key, that's also a violation. So for years, we would have equipment like this that just had a screw. And if there was an overcurrent device inside of this equipment, I think this is a transfer switch, then we would have to get a screwdriver to open it, and that would violate 240.24. And the way they get around that now is to put this little piece of hardware on the screw so I can move it and do it with my thumb as a thumb turn and that complies as well. In fact there's even an informational note in the definition that says using keys is a common practice and is definitely allowed. So is this overcurrent device in here readily accessible? Yes it is. The fact that I need a key is perfectly fine. That's talked about in 110.26F and it's also talked about in the definition of readily accessible. So going back to the question at hand, was that installation compliant? Well, let's take a look at this one. Is this installation compliant? Now this just happened to be in the Bahamas and I'm not sure if they, uh, if they use the National Electrical Code or not. When I was there, it, it didn't appear so. <laughs> Sorry if I offend anybody. Uh, but does this comply? Here I've got this air conditioner that's up here on this, uh, on this platform and the disconnect is adjacent to it. Is that readily accessible? Well, it doesn't have to be readily accessible. It has to be readily accessible from the equipment, and that's the key. It's not that the disconnect has to be readily accessible. It has to be readily accessible from the equipment. Now, I need a portable ladder to get to the equipment, and we know that ready access means you don't need a portable ladder. But here's the thing. I've got a portable ladder, and I'm at the equipment. Once I'm at the equipment, can I reach the disconnect? And the answer in this instance is yes. This installation complies. That disconnect is readily accessible, not from grade, but from the equipment, and that's the requirement. So let's go back to this photograph. Does this installation comply? Well, I don't really like my answer, but it appears that it might. 
I didn't take this photograph, so I'm not exactly sure. I didn't, you know, I didn't try to get a scale and figure out exactly what the distance here is. It looks like it's maybe five feet, four feet perhaps. I guess if I leaned a ladder right between those two, I could reach the equipment and I could reach the disconnect without having to relocate the ladder. And if that's the case, then it complies. If I have to put the ladder over here, hit the disconnect, climb down, move the ladder, and go back up, that does not comply because it has to be readily accessible from the equipment. So this installation might comply. I don't like that, but it might. Let's talk about some of the other requirements here while we're talking about it. This is a uh, kind of a funny photograph. I've got the disconnecting means for the air conditioner and it's facing downward. Uh, is that a violation of the code? Well, the code doesn't necessarily say anything about that per se. We'll talk about something that, that could cover it. It was a change made in the 2020 code. But we need to remember that 110.26 refers to all electrical equipment, which includes disconnecting means. It says access and working space are required for all equipment in order to allow safe operation and maintenance of the equipment. So now we have to go back and we look at it and say, okay, can I maintain this disconnect safely? I don't know if there's a lot of maintenance. Can I operate the disconnect safely? Somebody's going to have to make a judgment call on that. I can tell you that if I was the inspector on this, I would not allow it. And I like to think that I'm a, a fairly liberal inspector when it comes to code requirements, but I have a problem with this installation. I don't think that I can safely operate and maintain that disconnect as installed. So I would cite the general statement of 110.26. Now here's where things get difficult. We know that all equipment has to be capable of being worked on safely and operated safely. What about this disconnecting means here? Does that comply? Can I work on it safely first and foremost? That's a judgment call. But we also need to analyze this statement here, 110.26a. Working space for equipment up to 1,000 volts to ground must comply with 110.26A1 through A4 if that equipment is likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized. Somebody has to make that determination. Is a disconnecting means like this likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized? If your answer is yes, then I need three foot or three and a half or four feet deep depending on the voltage and the conditions. I need at least 30 inches wide, but not less than the width of the equipment, and I need at least six and a half feet high, but also not less than the height of the equipment. So it's a judgment call whether or not this, me this needs the entire working space or just enough space to work on it safely. This is a change that was made in the 2020 code. Overcurrent device enclosures must be mounted vertically. Now, I think most of us, when we think of vertical versus horizontal, I find myself using a, a, my cell phone for this, I think we can all agree this is vertical, and this is horizontal. Now, in the installation here, it's flat. Is that horizontal? Well, it's definitely not vertical. We can agree with that. And therefore, it's a violation if it contains overcurrent protection. So if there's fuses inside of this disconnect, this would be a definite violation. Even if there's not, I would tell you that it probably violates 110.26. That's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. And as always, make sure you subscribe and uh, like my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and do all of those things. <laughs> Making sure I didn't miss anything. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, I think that's all of them. Take care, everybody. Be safe out there.